Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Steve from graphicdesignertips.com. This is episode number 22 of Logo Design Bootcamp, where every week I design a new fictitious logo for you as a graphic artist to learn from in Adobe Illustrator, and ultimately in the end, you'll become much, much better. So this week's episode is based on the letter V. And uh, so we only have four more episodes left after this, but I haven't done anything really with three-dimensional logos. Uh, so the logo I have designed for the letter V is a more modernized type of logo. It's called Vertical Vortex. And uh, it's a pretty cool logo with a nice symbol that's, uh, you know, a little windy type of symbol where, you know, you're going to learn uh, some three-dimensionality today. So let me review this logo. Then we'll jump into Adobe Illustrator CS6 and build it for you. And uh, stick with us. We'll wrap up at the end. The Vertical Vortex logo uh, is a very well-balanced logo. Uh, the symbol to the left does make it a little heavier on the left, uh, but overall you can use that symbol as a standalone. Uh, you can use the text as a standalone. And it is a three-dimensional text. So um, I'll show you how I did that. I actually didn't do that in any of my tutorials yet. It's something I don't use often on logo design projects, but it definitely worked for this logo. You know, I like my color scheme. I picked out um, an orange color scheme, you know, very basic orange and white and gray. and uh, on a black background. So I think maybe I've done one other logo on a, on a dark background. This can also be converted to color on a lighter background. So um, let's get into Adobe Illustrator uh, CS6. I'll show you how to build this. And also to mention uh, that obviously the the whole point of this was the uh, the swirling of the V. So uh, this was something I actually sketched out and then I was able to bring into the computer and really, um, really evolve it. And this is kind of what it, uh, what my whole process, you know, where I kind of started over here, I started using the Pathfinder, started messing around with some fonts uh, all around, and then I started come up, came up here. I go all over my canvas when I work. It's uh, it's a little crazy, but um, you know, that's what every uh, you know, logo design artist does because you want to get as many uh, you know versions and stuff out in a specific amount of time. Now we're in Adobe Illustrator CS6. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up and we're going to hit the type tool and we're going to type out the word vertical vortex as one word. And we're going to hit escape when that is done. And you're going to search for, uh, well, you can do your own font, but um, the font that I found was called U Carry Mobile. Y U K A R I M O B I L E. We can download that free on the internet. And I'm going to make this a little bit larger while holding the shift button. And let's just turn this white for now. Fill it with white. And we're just going to come to object. Or, excuse me, type create outlines or shift command O. Next thing you want to do is you want to come right click this or go up to object ungroup or command uh, shift command uh, G. Giving you guys a couple different ways of doing this. And uh, so now we have the word vertical vortex. How easy was that? So um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to we're going to do this little point up here. We're gonna augment the V over here and uh, you know make this kind of spaced out how it is. So the first thing I did was I took this point here uh, by hitting my A on my keyboard, I grab in this line, and I'm gonna pull this all the way out while holding the shift button, because if you don't hold shift, this is gonna happen. So hold the shift button so it'll go nice and straight out for you. And when you get to the end of that V, um, you're now gonna hit the minus sign on the keyboard or come up to the pen tool, go to the delete anchor point. We're gonna hit, click this point right here. It deletes an anchor point. It doesn't screw up the actual shape. Uh, well, no, it changes the shape, but it doesn't break the cycle of the points connecting. Uh, it just subtracted the point. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the direct selection. I'm going to grab this point. I'm going to pull that up a little bit while holding shift. Again, it's going to happen like that if you don't hold shift. And you're going to pull that up a little bit. And I'm just going to take this line here on the T, and I just wanted to move that down a little bit just to create some space right there. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is the fact that we ungrouped all these, I can select these letters individually if I wanted. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to nudge this to the right. And actually, I'm sorry, I did not mention this. Um, what you want to do is you want to, uh, I'm going to show you my canvas real quick. I basically just made a huge box. You could throw it on a background layer, which I'm going to do right now by creating a layer, putting it onto there and putting the layer behind and locking it so I can't mess with that black area. Now that black area, Phil, I did like 67% cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. 
and I'll give you a, you know, um, it won't give you a hundred percent. It won't give you the same feel that a hundred percent black will. It's more of like a, a muddy gray. So do that for your background. And now let's come back here to where we just left off. And all I'm going to do in here is I'm going to hit the subtraction point again, or minus sign on the keyboard. And we're going to subtract that point right there. And if you see what I did with the A, I just, I, you know, I didn't want all this funky extra space. So I hit the A on the keyboard uh, to get the direct selection tool. And while holding shift to pull this over to contour to that angle right there, um, I'm going to do the same thing with the letter V. I'm going to grab this point down here. I'm going to pull it. And now I'm going to click this line and pull this straight up. Okay. Um, obviously I have other areas open. I mean, you can do this with the O if you want and, and kind of mess around, but, um, you know what, why not? I'll leave it like that for now. Uh, just right now to, uh, differentiate this, let's select all of our letters by going to the regular arrow or V on the keyboard and selecting this. And we're going to group this back again. So we're going to go to object group or command G and we're going to fill it with, uh, let's see what kind of orange do I want to fill it with more golden orange, you know, golden yellow, or whatever. Um, and this, we're going to remain white. And now we're going to come into drawing this uh, actual piece right here. Now, there's a number of ways you could do this. You can make a V out of any font and start to pathfinder it out, actually cut it out. Or you can actually, um, you could take a screenshot of my screen right now and you can start to draw right over this. And I'm going to lock this so I don't move it. I'm going to draw right over it. And with the pen tool clicked or P on the keyboard, um, I'm going to fill this with red too so it stands out. Uh, we're going to click. We're going to make our points. And as we click, we're going to hold down and we can do, um, you know, manipulate the curves on there. And we're going to make these right here. And obviously we can't see this anymore, but I know it's behind it. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, overemphasize this point right here, this curve. And then I'm just going to come back in here with the A on the keyboard, direct selection. I'm going to grab this anchor right here. And I'm going to now mess around my angles to get it to where I want it to be. Same thing with this one. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. All right. And it's good enough. Uh, I'm going to do one side at a time and then I'm just going to flip it right over. Um, next thing with the pen tool, you want to um, make this sh shape behind it. You don't have to get the angles perfect right at first. You can always come back in. I mean, that's what they say you're supposed to do anyway. That's what I was taught long ago, but you know, sometimes I just want to get it perfect right off the bat. But if you're just starting out, don't even worry about, you know, getting this stuff perfect. All right, so we're going to click off of that. Uh, next shape is this shape right here. And I know I'm doing this in all red. But we'll change this shortly. All right. Next shape. And you can even, you know, start out here because this one, this shape, this lighter orange is uh, going to be hiding behind anyway. Let me finalize this logo. All right. And the final shape, we're going to do this right here. Obviously, like I said, my angle is off, but that's okay. Do that. All right, so we have completed that. Looks pretty cool and red too. All right, so we're going to do, do, do. Hey, when you take a screenshot of this, um, if you're doing this through a screenshot right now, you can also sample the colors that I'm using. You know, they'll come out close enough. I'm not getting that. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to go with the eyedropper tool and I'm going to select that yellow that I did. And now I'm going to select these two reds and I'm going to fill it with that orange. You're going to make sure you go to select same, uh, excuse me, object. Ah, where the hell am I? Object, arrange, send to back or shift command, open bracket. And that is going to give put these orange ones in the back. Now, obviously, I don't like what I did with uh, this area, so I'm going to come into my direct selection or A on the keyboard, and I'm going to start messing around with the points to pull them back, make them look 
more realistic and believable. All right. You know, this is where fine tuning comes in. This is where, you know, a lot of time comes in on the logos. That's why at first I don't do this stuff. If I, if I know the idea is, is going to look like crap, I'm not going to do all this fine tuned work and then the logo just be a nothing logo. So, you know, sometimes you have a rough, ugly uh, little idea going, but if you can vision, uh, visualize it, then, um, you know, save it for later. And when you know it's a final idea, then you can refine it. So now that we got the one side, like I said, I'm not going to refine this because this tutorial is going to take forever. I think this logo took me about two hours to build from concept to completion. So we're going to hit option, click, hold shift while you're doing this. All right. And it just copied one over. And we're now going to come to the O tool on the keyboard or reflect. I'm going to click right here. Now watch where my, my uh, crosshairs are. I'm going to move my crosshairs to the right while holding shift down. So it's going to flip it over perfectly just like so. I'm just going to move it right here. And I'm just going to make sure one thing. Um, now that I have this shape, I'm going to select these two. I'm going to come into the shape mode and hit unite in the pathfinder to make that bottom area one, let's see, one complete shape. Let's see, this is the refining part. I got these points that overlapped. Didn't come out right. Okay. That's good enough. All right, all right, all right. So now that we got the actual you know logo this could still be used as their logo even though there's no three-dimensional aspect to it but uh let's jump into actually making this three-dimensional now this is going to be the fun part so uh i would say take this entire piece and group it and see what happens it's all experimentation from here on out um we're going to select the vertical vortex logo and we're going to let's see we're going to group this entire selection out. Command G. I know I had you group the word vortex before, but um, we're going to come up into effect. Where was I? Effect, 3D, uh, extrude and bevel. All right, and we're going to set all these to zero. These first one, two, three. All right, I have the top. You can look at all my settings. Um, I don't do this often, so this was uh, kind of experimentation today. Um, I'm going to take. You can click the box and you can move it all around and it's going to screw up all your angles. But I really want to see, I want to see it go up this way. So that means I have to take this rotation, the, uh, if I hover over it, it says the X axis rotation. And I want to just mess with that. So I'm going to set this one back to zero and I'm going to go, going to go up with it. And excuse me, you got to push the preview button on the bottom left. All right, here we go. So seven, let's lower that just a little bit. Um, kind of, I'm going to stick with actually three on this. I'm going to do it less. Ah, let's do four. Screw it. Um, four and let's see, extrude depth. You could do is it 50 points. The more you go, that's going to happen. So this is, you know, try to have some fun with this. You know, that's what it's all about. Design, having fun and experimenting. I don't think I, nope. I, leave your perspective on zero. So now you want to hit OK. And now if you look, we have basically what we have up here. Um, it's a little bit different, but what you can do is, and I know why, is um, we can select this and come into our appearance palette, which is going to be near the bottom right on most uh, default layouts. And uh, it basically the appearance palette is going to show you all the effects that you have on specific objects. So on this object, you have an effect of a 3D extrude and bevel you can click that right there and now you're back into your option hit preview again now what changed is if you see the colors the shadows they're dark in some areas um, that should have to do with the lighting here so let's mess around with this just a little bit all right let's see what we can come up with uh, you can change all these things the types of light let's see what happens so all experimentation. So let's hit OK on that. And now we have vertical, vertical vortex in that three-dimensional. And we're going to now select the logo. And we're going to come up to effect. And we don't have to go into extrude bevel. We could just apply it because we're going to use those same settings for that. Now, if you notice what happened, if I back up a little bit, it got darker based on the actual, um, actual three-dimensional effect of it. And, uh, you know, the... It was the lighting, that lighting area. 
So, you know, like I said, I did a lot of experimenting with this. So just mess around with this. Um, if you notice, my yellow got a little bit darker. And uh, what you can do now is you could select this and you can come to object and expand appearance. And now I can pull these elements individually. And if I select all these elements, I can now change them back to my bright color that I had. A touch brighter. One, two, three, four. I'm using the eyedropper to select that color. And that is the vertical vortex logo. Is Like I said, it, it looks very complicated, but it's actually very simple. Uh, and that was done in Adobe Illustrator CS6. All right, so thanks for sticking with us for another episode of Logo Design Bootcamp. We only have four episodes left, so leave the comments below on A, what you learned in this episode, how it helped you, and B, ideas for the remaining couple of episodes that we have. So um, here's a couple other episodes from our series. Always click the subscribe button and you'll get these every time they come out. I put these out every weekend. And uh, that's it, everybody. Um, I hope you're learning. I hope this is helping you out. And uh, I'll see you next week. Have a good night. Peace.